engineering founding father of Hack in the Box captured the flag. Uh, he's been in the computer security industry for the past five years, previously a system architect at Scan Associates. Having been involved with the organization of Hack in the Box security conference for the last three years, he ran, he ran the popular Capture the Flag hacking competition. And in the past five years in the industry, he has been involved in various aspects of computer security, including penetration testing, software product development, training, network defense, system administration, and as well as being a freelance consultant. He currently runs a startup company that develops vulnerability and patch management software. Uh, his fellow presenter today, who will make his way on stage shortly. <laughs> uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, first of all, uh, thank you for coming uh, to uh, HITB uh, 2009, and thanks for uh, attending this uh, talk. Uh, initially, the idea for this talk was supposed to be a lab sessions where we will walk through uh, analyzing uh, packet captures and extracting evidence for network-based forensics. But unfortunately, the uh, the arrangement has been changed, so instead of a two-hour hands-on lab sessions where you will, you know, be able to participate as well, but so it's been turned into a, a what do you call this, a, a presentation. So uh, without uh, wasting more time, let me begin. Um, anybody here performs network forensics or forensics in general? Raise your hands. No? One? Two? One? Two? Okay. So, what is network forensics? Uh, there are a few definitions of network forensics. The first one is on the screen. So, it's basically uh, the use of scientifically proven techniques to collect, fuse, and uh, identify, examine, correlate, uh, analyze, and document digital evidence from various sources. Okay? Uh, this is the uh, definition from uh, Gary Palmer. And according to security expert Marcus Renum, uh, network forensics is basically the capture, recording, and analysis of network events in order to discover the nature of security attacks or problem incidents. And according to Simpson Kaufingel, uh, there are two types of uh, network forensic systems, uh, catch it as you can, uh, in which all packets traversing through the network are stored and analyzed later. Or you have something that we are all quite familiar with, which is IDS model, stop, look, and listen, where every packet is inspected for uh, malicious uh, contents. <coughs> and um, basically, no this is about monitoring, determining whether there's, there's any anomalies, and uh, determining the nature of attacks if any. So, you can think of it in a scientific approach, you know, based on all these terms, or you can think of it as, uh, as, uh, as uh, uh, analyzing uh, recording, CCTV recording, for example. So in your house, you probably have a CCTV, and uh, you capture whatever that's going on. Yeah. For example, in an office, you know, people walking in and out, blah, blah, blah. And some of these activities, people walking in and out of the office, uh, carrying stuff, uh, moving things around, are legitimate activities. And network forensic comes when there's an indication of malicious activities. But it may not be malicious. It could be, a, uh, it could be uh, attributed to uh, a customer complaint and, you know, Customer calls up to you and say, "Hey, you know, uh, I was trying to pay for my, uh, you know, I was trying to, to buy a buy a laptop from your company, and I found out that somebody else has been using my credit card number." Okay, so it doesn't mean that you you perform network forensics for, you know, purely for uh, intrusion or attacks. So, so what happens now is in the real world. The investigator, the police, or the guards, they will take a look at the CCTV and try to figure out what's happened. You know? So they look at the frames, look at the audio, they look at the video, they try to identify who's the culprit, who comes in and out, and perform evidence from there, uh, perform their uh, investigation from there. 
So in network forensics, however, you know, instead of looking at uh, video recordings, you're looking at uh, packets. So some of the tasks involved might be reassembling packets, uh, extracting traffic, traffic contents, uh, examining network flows, inspecting packet headers, and so on. Right? So when you perform network forensics, or any forensics for that matter, especially for network forensics, you'll be asking you know, when a particular IP has successfully compromised the system. So you want to confirm that. You want to determine the duration of a HTTP sessions. How long is the session? Is it a long session? Is it a short session? If it's a long session, probably it's a file upload. You know, uh, a web mail activities, uploading files, sending files to web mail. If it's a long download session, it could be a you know, download sessions. A wish network protocol is used in attacks. TCP, UDP, ICMP, blah, blah, blah. What's the, my, uh, what's the main attribute of successful data transfer in TCP, for example? So when you establish that, OK, this guy is transferring data to an external server or whatever, so how do you confirm it? What's the attribute? Um, what's the main attribute of successful file download, upload in FTP connections? Uh, successful download, upload, or even delete, file delete in the SMB, in network shares, in Windows shares, for example. Um, and so on, and so on. Okay, so these are the questions that you want to answer. So, now, why network forensics? Okay, there's file based forensics, there's host based forensics, there's memory forensics. Why network forensics? because it's temporary resistance, especially if you deploy it in a bridge, if you're tapping the network in a tap or a bridge mode. So this evidence will not be uh, polluted or will not be uh, tampered with by the attacker. Unless, unless of course, you know, the attacker managed to get a hold of your uh, monitoring infrastructure. Uh, where else, if you look at the host-based forensics, log files can be deleted. You know, uh, files can be deleted, entries, timestamp can be changed, where else for network, it's temporary resistant. Uh, there's no performance impact on the endpoint. You're sniffing the network, you're monitoring the network, and that's it. Uh, no management impact on platform, you're not running uh, intensive programs or application or monitoring software on hosts or servers. Works across all operating system because you're dealing only with Picket data or network flow. Um, and you might be able to derive information that host base might not provide. Say, for example, a file has been deleted from a disk, right? Or has been um, so uh, on a network share. So basically, what happens is for a Samba share, when you delete a file, the Samba protocol will send a, will, will contain a fl uh, flags that indicate successful deletion. So you can confirm that in the, you can look for that particular attribute in the network capture, and you can confirm, yes, there's a successful file deletion, there's a successful file copying, blah, blah, blah. So network forensics, you all know this, used for evidence recovery, same as host base, same as mobile forensics, memory forensics. Uh, here's an example that I've, uh, that I've shown earlier, that I've talked about earlier. So basically, it gives you a lot of information uh, that host-based forensic might not give, and it will also complement uh, the host-based uh, forensic investigator. Right, let's move on. So the process is quite simple. You capture, you record, and then you analyze, right? So the goal is to discover nature of intuitions and to complement host-based forensics. Now, uh, let's talk about how maybe some MNCs or some companies do forensics, okay? So what they do, they get an IDS alert message, okay? So